Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, as you can see, we are going to be learning how to crochet a houndstooth mittens in which I've always wanted to try. So if you want to learn how to crochet these beautiful mittens, come and join me and let's crochet this one together. So here's the material we are going to be using for today's project, starting with this beautiful yarn. This is the Bari yarn by teslan.com and I have here this beautiful copper in the yellow. I'm going to be leaving the shades and the links where you can get these yarns in the description, so feel free to check it out. And with this yarn I'm going to be using a 5.5 millimeters hook, a small pair of scissors and a tapestry needle so that we can do the wee vents and some sewings as well. So these are all the materials and now let's begin with this amazing project. So the first thing we are going to be doing will be creating the cuffs made with this beautiful slip stitch ribbing and I'm going to be using my yellow yarn. If you want to learn how to make this ribbing in more details, I have a tutorial on YouTube on how to make ribbings. I have three different options for you. So you can check that out and also if you want to do any of the other options that I have available in that video. So for this one, I start with a slip knot. And then now I'm going to be creating my chain. So I'm going to be doing a chain of 11. This is going to be the height of the cuff here. So you can do a little bit longer if you want, or you can even do a little bit smaller. So I'm going to be doing a chain of 11 for mine. So for the very first row, we are going to be skipping the first chain, which is number 11. And then we are going to go into the next one and we are going to be creating the first slip stitch. And then we are going to be slip stitching all the way down. So in total, we are going to be having 10 stitches to work with. Here's the last one. There we go. So now to go up is super simple. All you have to do is to chain one. You are going to turn project and we are going to be working into the back loops only of the stitch. So we are going to be skipping the chain that we've created. We are going to go into the very first one, the very first stitch we can find, back loop only, and then slip stitch. And then next stitch, back loop only, and then slip stitch, back loop only, go through that stitch, pull up a loop and slip stitch. And then follow the same all the way down. Remember that if you want to learn this in more detail, I'm going to be linking the video in the description and also in the little eye. So the last stitch you will see, you can always go back and count, is going to be the number 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have only 9 stitches. So I need to get one more, in which is right here is the very last V looking stitch, this one. So back loop only and slip stitch. And now you can just follow the same step as previous. So chain one, turn project, skip the chain one, go into the first stitch available, pull up a loop and slip stitch. Go into the next stitch, back loop only, pull up a loop and slip stitch. And then go all the way down. And that's all we are going to be doing for the ribbing. So you can follow the same steps as many times as you want until you have the sizing of the cuffs you need. Basically that goes around your wrist and it closes here nicely and snug. 
So here I have all the rows completed for the cuffs and this is how it should fit you, nicely and snug. So the length of my cuff here is six centimeters and then the width without stretching is 16 centimeters. And to count the rows, what I prefer, <laughs> this is my kind of way of counting the rows when I'm doing slip stitches, is to count the braids going across. You can see that we have like braid looking lines all the way across and I don't count this line at the top or this line at the bottom. So in total, I have 19 braids going across all the way to this one here. All right, just so you know how I count. <laughs> and also you have the measurement, so that's going to help you as well when you're doing the rows. So once you have the rows for the cuffs, we can now put it together, the bottom with the top, and we are going to be sewing the two together. So first, what I like to do is just chain one, and then I turn my project like this, and then I put the two sides together and then from here we can just start the sewing. So here I have both sides together. So what I do to sew the two sides, I start from the one here at the top. So you go through the very first stitch, so you're gonna get the entire stitch, the one that is left here at the bottom basically. Go through the first one, this one, and then you're gonna go through the one on the other side, so skip the chain one, and then you're gonna go through the first stitch, back loop only, and then you're gonna go through both stitches, make it nice and tight, and then you go into slip stitch, the two stitches together. So go into the next stitch from this side, and then the next stitch from the other, back loop only, pull up a loop, through both stitches and then slip stitch. Go through the next stitch from one side and then back loop into the other. Pull up a loop through both and then slip stitch. And that's all you have to do all the way down, making sure that you get all the stitches, all the 10 stitches. So when you get at the end, you will have one last stitch, so you're gonna go through this last one and then the last one from the other side, back loop only, and then slip stitch the two. So here is the sewing and from here we are going to be starting to go around and create the mittens. If you want, you can keep this side as the right side, it's pretty much invisible, the sewing, but if you want, you can just turn inside out and you're gonna have this beautiful finishing and you don't really see the sewing at all, which is amazing. So it's going to be completely up to you how you're going to be deciding which side you want to be on the outside. I'm gonna go like this. So it's basically ready for me to go around now. So I'm going to chain one and what we have to do is to create 20 single crochets going around. I'm going to do the first single crochet in between and right in the middle where we've done the sewing. So just find a stitch, pull up a loop and then single crochet. If you want, you can place a stitch marker here. You don't really need it, but sometimes it's helpful because it's the same shade and it's a little bit hard to find when you get to this point. So if you want, just place a stitch marker here. And what I like to do from now on is to go around the back of the braided row. So insert your hook here, go around like this. Find another stitch to go through and then you're going to pull up a loop and then you're going to single crochet like that. So go through the beginning of the row and then you're going to come out from the other side, going around the back like this, pull up a loop and single crochet. 
So do that all the way around until you have, in this case, I'm going to be having 20 single crochets. So until you have the amount of single crochets you need. And look at the detail. It's incredibly beautiful, the detail, when we do this way. So I've done here the last one into my last braided row and we want to make sure that it's an even number going around. So if you've ended up with a odd number, like me, I have 21 stitches because I've added this first one here. So I'm just going to be adding into that same stitch from the beginning another single crochet. So you can do that as well. And then into that one, we are going to slip stitch. So in total here now we have 22 single crochets. So I'm going to be starting the first round with the yellow and then the next one we are going to be doing with the copper brown shade. So the first thing we are going to be doing is to chain one and then into this same stitch, you can see the one that we've created, the slip stitch, we are going to be doing a single crochet so we are always going to be starting with a single crochet for this one at the beginning. And then we are going to be adding a stitch marker at the beginning if you want into this first stitch. And then the next one is going to be a double crochet. So if you don't know how to do a double crochet, you're going to wrap the yarn around the hook, go through the stitch. The next one, you're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two just like that, so that's a double crochet. And then the next one is going to be a single crochet, and then the following one is going to be a double crochet. So you're going to be following this same step all the way around, one stitch, the next one is going to be single crochet, and then double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, all the way around. So once you get at the end, this one for me is stitch number 22. So it's going to be with a double crochet. And then we've started with a single crochet. So if you want, you can slip stitch right here and then fasten off and add the next shade. But if you do this, you're going to be having a lot of weave-ins to do at the end. So I like to use the same yarn all the way through to create the entire mitten without having to fasten off because then you just have two yarns to weave in at the end. So what I do, <laughs> it's for this last stitch here. So I'm going to be doing that again for you because I do it differently. If you are going to fasten off, then you have to do exactly as I did previously. So you can do that or you can do what I'm going to be doing now. So you're going to be creating the first part of the double crochet and then you're going to yarn over, pull through two and then you're going to be keeping it like this for now. Drop it and then you're gonna get the next shade. So get the end of the yarn, leave a little tail, fold it in half and then you're just gonna pass it through the two loops and then from here we can continue with the pattern and it's basically going to be continuing all the way around. It's going to be so much easier if we do this way. So now we are going to be working with two yarns at the same time. It's super simple. Don't You don't have to be scared about this part because it's super, super easy. Um, I'm going to be dropping the yellow because the joining is always going to be here. So just drop the yellow, don't worry about it, and just get the copper yarn for now. Drop the yellow, we're not gonna use until we get back to this point. So you can feed this little tail into the stitches here, but just leave a little bit so you can weave in and secure this one in place, I can show you later. So remove the stitch marker, and into this stitch where the stitch marker was, it was a single crochet, so on top of this one, we are going to be doing a double crochet. Make it nice and tight by pulling this little tail. And then the next one, we have a double crochet. So it's going to be a single crochet on top. This little tail, I'm going to drop it now because I like to weave in. So if you want, you can feed a little bit more if you, if you prefer. 
So now every time you find a single crochet, you're going to be doing a double crochet on top. And every time you find a double crochet, you're going to be doing a single crochet on top. So the next one here is a single crochet. So we are going to be doing a double crochet. So which one is this one? Double crochet. So we are going to be doing single crochet, single crochet, double crochet on top, double crochet, single crochet right on top. All right, so that's what we are going to be doing going all the way around. So I got back into the beginning, as you can see. So we meet again with the copper yarn. And now we have the last stitch. So to get the yellow yarn again, because now we have to move from copper to yellow so that we can do one row of each shade. So I'm going to first create the first part of a single crochet. I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to drop the copper, so we are not gonna use this anymore. And I'm going to catch the yellow. And also remember that the yellow for me, it's on the inside here because I've decided to turn inside out um, the cuffs, the ribbing that I've, that I've done, so that I have this on the outside. Just so that you remember <laughs> that part. Um, I'm going to make the copper nice and tight and then release that, get the yellow yarn, and now with the yellow you are going to be completing, making sure the, the copper is always nice and tight. You can hold with your pinky here if you want, uh, or with your ring finger, just like that. And you're going to be completing this with the yellow yarn. Make it nice and tight here at the back with your copper, and then from here we can now continue the pattern. So we have a double crochet into the next one. So we are going to be doing a single crochet right on top of that double crochet. So the next stitch is a single crochet. So we are going to be doing a double crochet on top of that single crochet. So now it's single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, all the way around. And it's that simple. The only thing really that I really wanted to show you better it's the kind of the switching of the yarn because the rest is super super easy because you're just going to be doing single crochet double crochet single crochet double crochet all the way around but just make sure that you check the <laughs> the stitch that it's in the previous round so that you don't mess it up the pattern so just follow the pattern all the way around and then i'm going to meet you right at the end so I got back to the beginning, as you can see. So I got back into, so I got back to the beginning, as you can see, and I'm going to be doing my last stitch, which is a double crochet. But right here, it's where we are going to be changing to copper so that we can continue. So create the first part of a double crochet, yarn over, pull through two, keeping the two loops on the hook. So you're going to now drop the yellow. I'm gonna make it here a little bit nice and tight. And then here you're going to be getting the copper and then make sure that it's nice and tight complete the double crochet with the copper make it nice and tight by pulling the yellow and now you can continue the pattern with the copper you see so so easy so here we have a single crochet so the next one is going to be the first stitch for the next round is going to be a double crochet so you already know the drill here every time you find a single crochet you're going to be doing a double crochet every time you find a double crochet into the previous round you're going to be doing a single crochet right on top so I'm going to to do mine all the way around and then I'm going to meet you right at the end so when you get back to the beginning create the first part of the double crochet into the last stitch of the yellow and then here we are going to be switching to the yellow, make sure that the copper is nice and tight. And then you're going to finish this last stitch, the single crochet with the yellow, pull nice and tight the copper so it tightens the stitch a little bit. And then now we can create the next round with the yellow. So the first stitch is going to be a single crochet because here we have a double crochet. 
So it's going to be single crochet, double crochet all the way around. And what I'm going to be doing is follow the same steps until I have five rounds in total for the very beginning. So I have here one, two, three, four. This one is going to be number five. So once I have this one completed, I will be back and then I'm going to be showing you the next step in which is going to be creating the little hole for the thumb. Check this beautiful pattern out. Isn't it the most beautiful pattern ever? And it's so simple. I was so scared of doing this pattern because I thought it was going to be super hard. But at the end of the day, it's the easiest pattern ever and it's so beautiful. The texture is amazing and the design is incredible. So before I carry on, I just want to show you this beginning here if you want to do a little bit longer because I know that some of you do prefer your mittens to be a little bit longer so it covers more um, your arms. This one I prefer a little bit shorter. So this one goes to here as you can see it looks super cute and for this one I've decided to do five rounds for the beginning that's why it's a little bit shorter but if you want you can do 10 rounds here at the beginning before the thumb and it's going to be a little bit longer you can see the difference between the two so this one here at the beginning we have 10 rounds and this one at the beginning we have five rounds and this one is a little bit longer it's a lot longer than the other one so it goes to here as you can see yeah so it's going to be up to you how you want to do this beginning depending on your taste so this one here that i have already completed i've done for my right hand as you can see so for the right hand once you finish this round here you're going to put it on and then the sewing is going to be on the right side so that you can um, from here create the chain to connect to the other side and then you can do the thumb so it's pretty much easy because the sewing is already at the bottom but now for the left hand you have to do a little bit different what I found the best to do you're going to be keeping the yellow here you're not going to cut this yarn and we are just cutting the copper yarn but you're going to leave a little long tail a little long tail no you're gonna leave a long tail <laughs> here so that we can join the two ends later so that we can continue the pattern from this point and so that we don't have to do any uh, fasten off so just cut a long tail I'm going to be placing all the yarns on the inside of my mittens for now so that it's not on the way while I'm doing the thumb because that's what we are going to be doing next so left hand try it on place exactly where you want here the sewing so now you have to choose one stitch that it's in the middle of your thumb and your index finger right here in the middle so just find a stitch that it's lined with the middle here so mine is this one so this is the one that we are going to be joining our yarn so the copper and then we are going to be counting one two three four five six and then you can go into stitch number seven and you can place another stitch marker so from here to here we are going to be creating the thumb and then this is going to be in the middle so i'm going to be doing a slip knot with my copper yarn the sun is going away it was so nice <laughs> So I'm going to be starting where I have the sewing into this stitch marker. So you're going to go through this stitch where the stitch marker is, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. So I like to attach my yarns with a single crochet as you can see. And then I'm going to be chaining three. So one, two, three. And then you're going to go into the other stitch where the stitch marker is and we are going to you can slip stitch here or you can do a single crochet i'm already going to start with a single crochet because we are going to single crochet all the way around now into this section because we are going to be from here creating the thumb so we can now remove the stitch markers 
So you can check if the sewing is right in the middle and that your thumb fits inside of the chain, this little hole that we've created. And you can see that it fits perfectly, it's not too tight or too loose. It's the perfect fitting. So now from here, we are going to be creating the thumb, which is super simple. So let's do that. So I like to have the single crochet stitches on the right side once I have the rows completed. So you can see that this is the right side of the stitch. So I like to start with a chain one and then I turn my project and then I start here where the chains are. So I'm going to go through the very first chain that I can find and then I'm going to be creating a single crochet. If you want, you can place a stitch marker here so that you know that this was the first single crochet. And also from here and also for the thumb, we are going to work continuously going around. So you want to make sure that you keep the stitch marker in there. So next chain available, single crochet, and then the last one, single crochet. So now here we got into the single crochet where we've done the attaching. So right in the middle of the single crochet at the bottom here, go through that, pull up a loop and then create a single crochet here. And now we have the stitches on the actual mittens. So not on the chain going around. So go into those stitches and create single crochets. So here we should have six, one, two, three, four, five, and six stitches. Once you get into the single crochet, again, you're going to be doing exactly the same as we did here on the other side. Find the single crochet, go right at the bottom in the middle of the single crochet. You can find a little stitch pull up a loop and single crochet. And then you're going to be finding where you've created the first one. So I have the stitch marker, so that's easy to find. And then into this one, you're going to be creating the first single crochet. So we are not chaining one or anything here. We are going to work continuously around. So place a stitch marker into this first one created. So now you can just work going around and around and around until you have seven rounds in total in my case. So I have created the first one. This is going to be the second. All right. So just follow the stitches that you have into the previous round and create single crochets. So when you get at the end, you can see that we have one stitch here. So make sure that you get that last one. And then we are going to be starting again. And here for the thumb, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven stitches in total. So I have six here on this side that we've skipped, and then two that it's the base single crochets, and then three chains going from one side to the other. So that's eleven stitches in total so that's correct so now from here i'm just going to show you one more time so remove stitch marker create a single crochet into this very first one so no chaining just working continuously place the stitch marker back into the first stitch first single crochet and now you can just go around following the same steps so now I have seven rounds in total for the thumb and I'm going to be doing one more with some decreases so that it decreases a little bit here at the top so that it's not super big and square at the top of the thumb. So remove the stitch marker. So go through this stitch. You're going to pull up a loop, keep it on the hook, go into the next one, pull up a loop, keep it on the hook. And now you're going to yarn over and pull through all the stitches together. So that's a decrease. I'm going to return the stitch marker into this first one so that we know that this is the first one. And then for the next one, I'm going to be doing one single crochet. 
and then for the next two we are going to be doing a decrease single crochet into the next and then decrease into the next two and then one single crochet into the next and then for the last two here decrease there we go so now I'm going to remove the stitch marker and now for the last round we are going to be doing decreases all the way around so go into the next two and decrease return stitch marker next two and decrease and then next two it's a little bit hard this part but it's so worth it and it looks so nice and then we are going to be having one stitch left after this decrease so yeah we have one left here so I'm going to just create one single crochet into this one and then we are going to slip stitch into the one where the stitch marker was just slip stitch just like that so now we can use a little tail to close and sew at the top here so you can try it on and see if that's good for your thumb mine is perfect you can cut just a little bit of yarn I'm going to first fasten off And I'm going to be threading this yarn into a tapestry needle. You will see that it's just a super tiny little hole to close. It's not big at all because we've done all the, the decreases. So what I like to do is just to close a few little gaps that we have here and there so that it looks nice. So I'm going to go through here. You can just see the stitches that I'm going to go through just so I can close the little gap at the top all right that's pretty much closed actually so I'm gonna do just one more here at the top so that it closes the top okay I am happy with this so I'm going to just go back a little bit so I'm going to take this yarn to the reverse and I'm going to weave in because I already have this one on my tapestry needle So once you've done the weave-in, we can cut this yarn and I'm also going to be doing this other weave-in so that it's not on the way when we are doing the rest of the mittens. So now that we have the thumb completed, we can go back into where we've cut the copper yarn and we can continue from here and create the fingers and then close at the top so it's super simple i'm just going to show you the beginning here because you're going to be doing exactly the same as we did into these five rounds and create the fingers so i'm going to be attaching again my copper yarn into this yarn that we've cut so if you don't know how to attach um, the yarns together I'm going to show you so you're gonna get the one that is attached to the project you're gonna leave it like this nice and straight you're gonna get the one that is attached to the yarn ball you're gonna put it here so you're going to be placing under the one that is attached to the project and you're going to be making a knot right here and then the one attached to the project you're going to be placing under the one that is attached to the yarn ball 
and then you're going to be making a knot just one knot and then you are going to be pulling the two yarns the one that is attached to the project and the one that is attached to the yarn ball and you're just going to be pulling them nice and tight until they join in the middle and then once that's done you can just go ahead and cut the ends off and that's it so now we have the yarn ready the copper one so first you have to transition from yellow to copper so do that and you already know how to do it so the next stitch is going to be a double crochet so i'm going to do that and transition to copper there we go this part here you already know so just follow the steps following the pattern so the first one is a double crochet and then the next one is a single and then double now we go into this part here where the thumb is so we are going to be doing so single crochet into that one where we have the first single crochet So now we are going to be counting the stitches that we have going around and we are going to be adding a few stitch markers where we have to do the extra adding of stitches if needed to. So I'm going to be starting to count from this last single crochet that I did. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Let's see? 17, 18, 19 and 20. So the only one that I'm gonna that I'm gonna have to use it's this one so it's 20 into this single crochet stitch. This one here that is together with this single crochet we can skip and go straight into that chain that we've created for the thumb. But if we skip and go straight into here it's we are going to be having a large gap here so I'm going to be doing a decrease a double crochet decrease here so you're going to be doing the first part of a double crochet into this single crochet stitch and then you're going to yarn over pull through the first two loops keeping the last one on the hook and then you're going to wrap the yarn around the hook you're going to go through the first stitch the next stitch you can find yarn over pull through two keeping the last one on the hook and then you're going to yarn over pull through all the loops together so this one here it's a double crochet decrease and it counts as the, the double crochet because that's the pattern. So for the next stitch we are going to be doing a single crochet and then the next one which is the third chain from the thumb we are going to be doing a double crochet and then here is where we also going to be using the single crochet but this time we are going to be adding one stitch we are not doing a decrease here so double crochet single crochet into this one make sure that it's kind of in the middle of the stitch so there is no gaps there we go single crochet and then into that same stitch you can see that we have the single crochet and then the same stitch here we are going to be doing a double crochet and then from here you can just follow the pattern all the way around so single crochet double crochet single crochet double crochet so from here we are going to now transition to yellow so just follow the same steps as we were doing here for the five rounds at the beginning so i'm going to be doing the single crochet and transition to yellow make it nice and tight and then from here we can continue so we have a double crochet so it's beginning with a single crochet and then we can just go all the way around now we have the stitches already nicely and prepared for the hound's tooth pattern so when you get into here the decrease because the double crochet decrease we are going to be doing a single crochet right on top if you have a single crochet decrease 
then you can do a double crochet on top of this one, all right? And now we can just follow the pattern all the way around. And you wanna make sure that you have always, always 20 stitches going around. So we got to the end, as you can see. So we are going to be doing a double crochet, but just the beginning and then switching to copper. And then we can start the pattern again. You already know what to do from now on. So just keep on repeating the pattern as many times as you want until you have the right height for your fingers. So now I'm going to be continuing with the houndstooth pattern, switching the colors and doing exactly the same as we were doing before. It's super simple. You just wanna make sure that you have the 20 stitches around every time you go up. You can always go back and count. And for this part here, for the fingers, I'm going to be doing 12 rounds in total, counting the first one that we've created here with the houndstooth pattern, which is the copper, all right? So you can always place a little stitch marker here to know that this was the first round right after the thumb. So as you can see, I have my 12 rounds right after the thumb in total. So from this point all the way up to here, 12 rounds following the houndstooth pattern. So now what we have to do is just to create one round of decreases right at the top and then we can close the fingers and we are basically done with our mittens. How exciting. So we are going to be doing one decrease and one double crochet. Decrease, double crochet, decrease, double crochet all the way around. So you already know how to do a double crochet decrease because I showed you here. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first decrease into the next two stitches and then the next one is going to be one double crochet and then decrease into the next two and then one double crochet into the next stitch. So keep on following that all the way around and then I'll meet you right at the end. So when you get at the end, I'm going to be doing my last decrease into the last two stitches. So this is our last round for the mittens. We can now chain one. You wanna make sure that you leave enough yarn to do a little sewing at the top so it's not a lot of yarn that you need. Before I fasten off, I just chain one and then pull the yarn out of the hook and I fasten off by just giving a little tug. So I have a really fun way of closing the top of the mittens so that it looks super nice. Just like this. It's It can be a little bit... Um, <laughs> confusing at first but it's so easy once you get the hang of it um, so you can do the way that I'm going to show you or you can just sew in a zigzag motion and then pull nice and tight and fasten off all that good stuff so insert your hook into this very first stitch and then you're going to pull up a loop and then you're going to be doing this until it doesn't fit any more loops on the hook here. So just go all the way around, pulling up loops through all the stitches. Once you cannot do this anymore, you're going to release it from all the loops, but making sure that they are going to stay right here. You can always pull them a little bit more if you need to. And then you're gonna go into the very first one and then you're going to continue all the way around until you don't have any more space in the hook and then go through the first one and continue all the way down. So once you get at the end, what you're going to be doing is threading your yarn into a tapestry needle and then you're gonna go back into the loops. So we finished right here. So you're gonna go back into the loops. 
with this yarn making sure that you get all the loops if they end up if you end up losing a few then you can just do one by one and you will be able to get all of them just go slowly in this part but it does work trust me see you can just catch them back And then the last one. So once you've done all the way around, you are just going to pull nice and tight, but not too tight because this yarn, it's very delicate. So just be careful when you pull and close the top here. So I just like to spread it like this and then just make it nice and tight and then I go through all the loops one more time slowly and making it nice and tight so that it closes the middle as you can see just like that go around and pulling nice and tight once you're happy you will take this yarn to the reverse and we can do the weave-in. So here is the inside of my mitten. This one that I've just completed. Remember that for the thumb, I've done the weave-in of the two that was here. So, I just have three yarns to weave in, only three yarns, which is incredible. So I'm going to weave this one in because it's already here. So here we have the mittens now completed, the right hand I had it already completed as you saw in the video. So here we have both of them side by side and let me tell you, I love this one so so much. I think it's my favorite project ever. I never tried this pattern before, this is my first time doing it and I'm in love. I think I'm gonna have to do some more tutorials, some more crochet projects using this stitch because it's amazing let me know if you want to see anything in particular maybe a jumper or a vest or a cardigan using this beautiful stitch and i'm going to love doing that so let me know in the comments if you want to see any project in particular so here we have our mittens now completed let's try them on oh my goodness it fits like a glove <laughs> it's amazing it fits perfectly i love the shades these are my shades. If you don't know, I love brown and yellow, my favorite colors. So here we have it. They look incredible. Oh my God, they look so beautiful. See, you don't really see um, the joining. It's so nice. This one is a little bit better because I did fix the pattern of the left hand a little bit better around this area because I was having some issues here on the right hand so I did manage to fix uh, some little issues that I was having and yeah it turned out amazing that's why I've created another one because then I fixed the issue and I made this one a little bit longer so that I could show you how it looks a little bit longer as well yeah so you can do it a little bit longer or shorter 
as I prefer. I prefer mine a little bit shorter and look at the sun. Here we have them completed. I really, really hope you have enjoyed. And if you end up posting on Instagram, don't forget to tag me at Brunetticality so that I can see your take on this one and the colors you have chosen. I really, really want to see your take on this one. So here we have the mittens now completed. I really hope you have enjoyed again today's project. Thank you so, so much for all the love and the support you have for everything that I do here on YouTube and Instagram. And I'll see you all on my next tutorial. Bye-bye. <laughs> They're so cute. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> Look at my heart with the mittens. So pretty.